So if you are interested in MQTT or are already an expert in that domain, I'm sure today's IoT show will be interesting for you. Shane is joining me to share Hicks, his experience in discovering Azure IoT services from the perspective of an MQTT guy. So that's today on the IoT show with Shane. Hi everyone, this is the IoT Show. I'm Olivier, your host, and today we'll make sure that friends don't let friends do IoT without Azure. And uh, for that, we have Shane with us today. Shane, how are you? Not too bad. I love the t-shirt. Yeah, right? Very cool. I'll try I and need to get me. one. I'll send you one. I'll send you one. I have some Please, of these. Let's do it. And I've been waiting for being on, on an episode with someone like you to sport the t-shirt and go through that sentence, to be honest. <laughs> well, you know, it's good. Um, yeah, so my friend, no, let's let's talk about let's talk about your background. Let's talk about MQTT. Uh, let's talk about how you came to learn about Azure IoT tools and services, and let's share your experience with other developers out there so that they know what to do, what not to do, where to go. Uh, at everyone's experience is going to be different because everyone has different objectives, different uh, you know, um, different skills, different preferences. Uh, but still, it's going to be a very interesting conversation we're going to have today. Before we jump into that, who are you? I am Shane Baldacino. I am a passionate technologist uh, out of Melbourne, Australia. Currently work for Microsoft in the role of Chief Architect in Australia. So, look, my background is, you know, someone who's been incredibly, uh, you know, passionate about technology in general. The kid who took a DOS manual to school for show and tell <laughs> at age eight, all right? So, you know, that probably gives you a little bit of a taste here through to, you know, starting and f founding a startup through to working for a scaler. Uh, I've worked for hyperscale cloud providers and worked for really large food manufacturers. And now here I am at Microsoft. Having fun, playing around with technology, recommending architectures and so on, right? That's what we do, exactly. Uh, demystifying the magic, you know, helping customers see around corners and get past those rough edges. Love it, love it. And you have a blog post, we'll send a link at the end of the, of the show yeah, here, sure. that people can, can follow you and can see your, your uh, what are called tribulations. And right now, um, you know, you went through that experience of discovering the Azure IoT services. And for that, uh, you wanted to connect your home automation system. So tell me a bit uh, about this home automation system of yours. Yeah, so look, I would like to think I've got a somewhat more advanced, you know, automation platform than most here. It's based off an Allen Bradley PLC, you know, what you might find in on the factory floor. Um, but the challenge with that is things cost a lot of money when you're talking PLCs. So that Allen Bradley PLC with, you know, it's limited amount of I.O., bulletproof by design, you know, I squared C, digital inputs, outputs, analog, you know, the whole kit and caboodle. I came to a point where I ran out of IO and I needed to expand. And I thought, hey, you know, this is getting a little bit expensive. I have an alarm system that has is also, you know, way over the top. It's got a, you know, a serial API, kind of like an event hub stream. It controls my doors, my locks, um, doors and locks, the same thing. Uh, you know, motion sensors all through the house. It's my eyes that feed this PLC. But I needed more IO. And I went down the path of, hey, well, I could probably run an Arduino Mega and I might use it as an I2C slave to the PLC. Mm -hmm. But look, you know, in the fullness of time, you go through things, you evolve, things change. And I settled on MQTT. It's a bit of a standard these days. Um, so in my house today, MQT does everything from doors, lights, through to, you know, roller shutters for windows, my solar PV array, uh, alarm sensors, um, you know, it's a transport medium. And a bit of a fun fact, and I, I found this way at the end, uh, you know, after I wired everything into Azure, my house does 1.4 messages per second averaged okay. over okay. the course of a day. So it's about 11,000 messages a second is roughly the, sorry, 11,000 messages a day 
gets shunted into Azure IoT Hub today. And you can find some really interesting results, you know, when you're starting to get that amount of telemetry. Got it. Yeah, and that's interesting because you were saying MQTT is a standard. Um, I, I like the metrics you just shared, but uh, back to the MQTT topics. So lots of customers are using MQTT in the industry as well. It's not just like a a, a protocol that's been used by hobbyists for their like home relation system. It's something that is used broadly. It happens to be the protocol used by lots of the hyperscaler IoT platforms as well. Uh, including Azure IoT, we're using MQTT though in a way which is a bit particular, and you're going to share a bit. You know some of your rantings or or uh, observations on that one. Uh, but we're going in a direction that I think uh, you know people will like in terms of supporting an actual MQTT broker. But still, so you you basically created your own automation system, evolved from that PLC uh, that was kind of not yeah. everyone's PLC, uh, and then you landed on an MQTT broker, I guess, like Mosquito, you were saying, right, that uh, mm -hmm. is installed in on, on a machine at your place. It allows you to orchestrate the messages between all these devices that you have in your home, right? So that was purely local, though, in your home. Correct, correct, correct. So, you know, we've gone from a PLC to having an Arduino and I built like, you know, initially I had like a HTTP interface between them syncing things up, not that practical. Mm -hmm. uh, through to, you know, the... The UI has also changed. So, you know, Home Assistant, incredibly popular platform. I'm sure, you know, lots of our listeners here today watching this show are using Home Assistant. Home Assistant to me is kind of like the presentation layer for yeah. everything. But we've got, you know, realistically in play, there's Home Assistant, there is a PLC, there's an Arduino, and there's, you know, about a hundred different things that also, you know, speak and subscribe to MQT to topics out there as well. So, you know, it's a bit of an evolution, but yes, MQTT is the spine. Mosquito is effectively the backbone of my house, which is a popular MQTT broker by Eclipse. And I wanted to initially, once I, when I joined Microsoft, I'm like, hey, can I just sync Mosquito into, um, into Azure IoT, just like I did in the past? And the answer was, you know, Kind of not right. Like it is possible, but you know, and it was it was great because it enabled me to really get an understanding, a taste of Azure IoT, the nuances. You know, what works, what doesn't work, what are the strengths, what are the weaknesses, and so yeah. on. And 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 honestly, you, when you came to me the first time and you introduced yourself, and we got to discuss, got all excited about you know the potential things to do, and it was like, Bonnie, hey, yes, we do support MQTT, but you know, your MQTT broker, I don't know. Let's try it, right? And so you went on with the first experience, which is about connecting that MQTT broker directly to IT Hub. How, how you were saying not so positive, certainly not the scenario that IT Hub has been designed for to start with. But tell me, what was your first, you know, experience with that uh, first trial? Well, my first experience was, hey, I can't find anything on, you know, Google, Bing, whatever your favorite search engine is, that would help me down this path. Okay. Um, you know, Azure IoT Hub today is not fully MQTT compliant, yep. right? We lack that broker. So I tried initially to get the Mosquito client tools. So for those who aren't familiar with the Mosquito client tools, there are popular you know, tools for Mosquito, the MQTT broker, to simulate, you know, subscribing and publishing to an MQTT topic. It's a pub sub system. At home, I am running MQTT with not over TLS. Azure IoT, of course, you know, it's a public endpoint, requires TLS, which is fine. But having our trusted root certificate authority not being, sorry, our root CA is not trusted. You know, it requires loading keychains and it just became a little uh, less practical than what I thought it would be. It would mean I would have to modify all of my devices you know, light switches uh, behind me here mm -hmm. and so on to configure to speak to, you know, Azure IoT Hub. And then, you know, more so when we talk about the laws of IoT, needing to turn a light switch on, as an example, and having to send a call out to the Azure cloud, it's not going to bode well if I'm not here, something goes wrong. I'm sure my you know, family would not be the happiest with that situation. <laughs> so, you know, it was more of a, a proof of concept. Could I get these to talk to each other was the question I was asking myself. 
Yeah, yeah. So um, first solution not working with WebVU because of TLS, because of this kind of things, which makes sense. Actually, at the end of the day, so you wanted to keep things local, right? You wanted to keep. You decided, to, yeah, you want to keep something happening down here. The control will should be down there. The autonomy should be down there. You don't want to rely on a backend that might not be accessible for some reason. So what was your second option and and trial? Well, the second path here is it's IoT Edge, and it's a fabulous platform, you know, incredibly extensible, uh, you know, containerized in effect. Uh, I have a 42 RU rack in my house because, you know, of course one of does. Course. <laughs> uh, alarm system is rack mountable. Storage is rack mountable. But today, the only realistically compute that I have in my house is one RU worth of four Raspberry Pis, power over Ethernet hats, you know, powered off a switch. Uh, and... I went down the path, IoT Edge just started supporting, you know, the, the humble but formidable Raspberry Pi. MQTT was in preview form. Yep. And I thought, hey, you know, let's have IoT Edge be my local MQTT server. Could I replace Mosquito and have my things in my house, mm -hmm. my PLC, my devices, everything, you know, those 1.4 messages a second, could I send them to IoT Edge and then have them be uh, transparently, you know, proxied into yep. Azure okay. without reconfiguring my devices? And look, it was somewhat successful, but I still needed to reconfigure my devices. You need to add every device as a child inside IoT Edge. And it was going to be a little bit too hard for my liking. Okay. Right? And we've got, you've got your t-shirt, friends don't let friends, you know, yeah. do yeah, IoT yeah, yeah, yeah. without Azure. Um, you know, I've got a Pied Piper t-shirt on. I like to build, right? So we have, an, I pivoted. I thought, hey, is there a better way to do this that meets my needs here? You know, thinking about all the challenges I've had with my house, you know, I've had to build my own thermostats. Mm. I've built interfaces with, you know, cooling and heating systems, and so on. I'm not too uh, unfamiliar, you know, with the oscilloscope and the soldering iron. So I thought, hey, let's build. So I pivoted. Um, in the last probably five to six years, my skills have definitely moved towards the uh, open source world. And we've got a Python SDK. How awesome is that? So I pivoted and I thought, hey, could I build my own version of I won't say version of IoT Edge, but could I do the same thing as IoT Edge was doing without having to add my devices into Azure IoT Hub? Yeah. And when without say, when any you say the device same thing, reconfiguration. When you say the same thing, what, what basically you're looking for is well, first not change any code on the leave devices for them to just talk MQTT to a broker, right? Uh, and then that broker would be doing the identity translation as well as whatever data transformation you needed to fit in the data onto Azure, right? Is that is that you know a great capture of what you did? Yeah, exactly, okay. exactly. Um, pretty much, right? So okay. look, um, perhaps we'll uh, switch to sharing my screen yeah, at the moment. Yeah, let's do that. Let's look at what you have here. So this on the screen here is a scenario of what I've ended up at, right? Mm -hmm. So on the left-hand side here, we have our things. Uh, lots of things, you know, over 100 things speaking MQTT. They continue to speak to Mosquito, my MQTT broker. And then we're using the Paho Python library. So, you know, pip install Paho MQTT. Yep. Uh, as long as the, along with the Azure uh, IoT Python SDK. And I just make a call into Azure IoT Hub. It is one way. So today, I only push messages into Azure IoT. Okay. I do not receive uh, messages back, but the, the SDK does support that. So if that's yeah. something I want to go down that path in the future, then, you know, absolutely. Yeah. All right, so I'll switch now to a little bit of code here and just walk our audience through, you know, how this magic happens. Okay, so look, as we can see here, we have, you know, some Python code here. Shouldn't be too hard to follow along at home. We're importing our library, so we're importing our Paho. So Paho is going to speak to Mosquito, and we're importing um, our Azure Python IoT SDK. Mm -hmm. You know, a bit of a, I like to print stuff out nice and verbose. Okay. 
So we've got a few functions here, you know, on connect to you know, on on connect. We've got a callback. And we've got an async call into Azure. So I'm going to scroll down to the bottom because basically how this works is right, we are connecting to our mosquito. Mm -hmm. We're going to listen for messages. So we're just listening for messages, listening, listening for messages. Okay. Then, then once we receive a message, if we go back up into the... So here when you say when you receive a message, you're basically listening to the MQTT messages that are arriving on your broker, right? Yes. Okay. Now, what okay. I should probably point out here is MQTT has a bit of a topic structure. So what I'm listening to is I'm listening on the path stat plus so to match anything and power. Now, I might just bring up um, a MQTT. Jeez, I've forgotten the name here. Um, I am going to bring up, 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 MQTT Explorer. Okay, now I think my kids are kind of stationary at the moment, but uh, these are the, this is a topic structure here. So what I'm saying here is, right, so I want to know, um, I'm, for example, here, we're looking at stat. I'm not, anything that matches uh, stat and power, I want to understand if the state has changed. Okay. So as, um, I'm going to go back to our code. So it's my topic filter. So you could do a topic of, say, hash, which is a wildcard to match everything, but you will also get some broker stats as well. But look, we are we're waiting for messages. Uh, sorry. We are we're waiting for messages. Once we receive that payload, we then run an asynchronous call and we call the Azure function, which then goes on its way, you know, and do a bit of uh, manipulation of the message and I send a payload into Azure. Got it. So, you know, it's great to talk about this, but I would like to show, not tell. So let me just open up my terminal here. Oops. All right. So we'll kick this off. I might just make this a little bit bigger. So look, we are listening for messages. Now I have a few messages I've just left in the hub, sorry, on my broker. So inside MQTT, you can define what's called last will and testament. You can have messages that are effectively that persist on there. So for the purpose of this okay. demo, we're getting a lot of messages initially, but then it will, you know, catch up to that, you know, 1.4 or so messages per second. I can we're about at that rhythm right now, right? You see one something every second, basically. Yeah. Love it. All right, so, so basically, you, know, yeah, you have the system yep. working here as in, you know, receiving a message on, uh, listening for topics like that are about, you know, power, uh, and then, you know, sending all these messages up to Azure IoT and all that in a few lines of code, actually, you don't have much there. No, it's like 80 lines of code, right? And a lot of it is a lot of print statements, right? Because I like to know what's, what's happening. Yeah. So... Yeah. And yeah. as a matter of fact, now if you want to receive something, you can attach a callback in your Python code to the cloud message, and then, and then basically send back to devices using it, the MQTT brokers, uh, the clients. You can actually now then send a message to the devices in the MQTT format using the right topic. Correct, and I think this is what I like, right? Being builders, it's really up to us. Yep. The SDK supports being able to call back. You know, I could send a message back, and then what I do with it is completely up to me. You know, I could, uh, you know, I have this thing when the garage door opens and it's my wife, you know, my lights in my study here, you know, they flash a different color to let me know that she's yeah, come yeah. home. You know, you can do so many, you know, the world is your oyster. Think about Azure is effectively just another input into, into my house. So... That's, yeah, that's funny. The that's SDK interesting how you're saying. Powerful. That's interesting. Very often we're talking about you know Azure and the cloud being where things are happening, and and I like your perspective of like, no, wait a second. I have my MQTT infrastructure here. Um, I have my broker. I created my collection of topics that makes sense to me. My system is here. The cloud is going to be a way of monitoring and eventually controlling remotely, but the system is here, right? It's the intelligence for now. I build it here. I want to keep it like that. And as a matter of fact, you were saying with that last solution of yours, 
you didn't have to change anything on the devices, right? They're still talking no. to your broker, the broker is there, and you're just interacting with that broker using the Python client for Azure IoT to have that interface up there. Correct. Nice. So, you know, I hear yeah. you went on an experiment with the embedded C SDK as well, because you're a maker, Correct. right? I'm a maker, and what I have uh, learned over time, you know, we all are constantly on a learning or flirting, failing and learning uh, path is, PLCs and microcontrollers, they're really reliable. There's no, think about the Raspberry Pi that this is running on in my rack. Mm -hmm. It's pretty reliable, but it's got an SD card. Yes, you can uh, flash them these days to be able to boot off uh, off USB. So you could use, uh, you can get some um, uh, devices that allow you to connect, like say boot off an SSD or an NVMe. And with the compute module four, it's got PCI Express. So, you know, you can effectively boot off NVMe, great. But it's still got an operating system. It need, needs to be watered and fed. Now, I'm sure I don't need to tell you or our audience here today, there is nothing more reliable than hardware. These microcontrollers are just, they're really super reliable. So I was super excited to see that, hey, we have started to support the ESP32 device. I'm a big fan of that because it is Arduino compliant, you know, yeah. something I'm familiar with. So yeah. I thought, hey, could I port what I've just done into hardware? And the answer is absolutely. You know, so I went on that journey. Okay. So basically creating the uh, embedded C client and you're still talking, so that piece of code you're describing is still interacting with your broker running on that Pi, right? So the, the broker is still running somewhere and you just have the ESP32 device that will, that will be the azure azure of your solution device, right? Yeah, so look, okay. I've got an ESP32, you know, on my desk here, I'm not sure how that shows on camera, but look, I've got some C++ code on the screen here now. It's effectively the same as Python, the logic, is the same. You know, we're initially we're connecting to, we've got our setup here, we're connecting to our, um, we're connecting to our broker, we're connecting to our Wi-Fi. You know, we're stuck in a loop until I can connect to my local uh, broker. Uh, here we go through a bit of a setup function. And once we're connected, we are just, you know, waiting for messages to be received, and then we push them to Azure IoT Hub. So yep, I'll just go back thing. up here. It's exactly the same thing, right? So yep. wait until we're connected. Whoop, and here's our callback. So we're waiting for messages here. It's a little bit different, yes, to the Python here, right? How, um, you know, and the challenges, I guess, in all the C, C++ is just different to Python. I'm sure we could all agree. It's just different, but the logic effectively is the same here. We're doing our, uh, we're subscribing to topics, messages are coming in, we're yeah. debugging them, I'm not debug, we're, we're decoding the messages coming in, in the payload, and we make a call into Azure. If I go down the very bottom here, I believe, um, you know, we send Same the message event. to, yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, I found something really interesting here, Shane. Um, in your journey, you started with like, hey, I'm an MQTT developer, I'm doing MQTT stuff, right? And here you're showing the traces from the ESP32, right? So basically the same thing as what we're saying on the Python app, right? Correct, correct, yeah, yeah. exactly. So that's running now, it's actually doing the same thing, but it's in nice. hardware. Nice. So, yeah, I was saying that in your journey, you started off from, you know, I'm in QTT, I want to talk topics. I remember we had a conversation, you were telling me, hey, Olivier, IoT Hub, they forced the format of the topics and so on. It's kind of annoying. I can't do that, what I want and so on. And interestingly, mm. in your journey, you went on to decide that, hey, you know what, at the end of the day, I want to keep my MQTT broker infrastructure here. And when I'm going to talk to Azure IoT, actually, in your code, when you talk to IoT, you, to Azure IoT, you don't even care whether it's using MQTT, HTTP, MQP, whatever protocol. It doesn't matter because you have a function that's called send event, right? Correct. And that's all you need to, to communicate with the cloud here, even though under the hood, it's also using MQTT. But from your perspective, it doesn't really matter because you have an SDK, which comes as a software library that makes that easier for you, right? Yeah. So my, my summary from all of this is our SDKs are incredibly powerful. 
for me, as a builder, being able to use our SDK was just, it opened up so many possibilities. It was really quick. We're talking like less than 100 lines of code for both solutions. Yes, yeah. I can make them a little bit more robust. I could have them to be full duplex, but we're not talking much code here. Yeah. The SDKs do away with, you know, like you said, it doesn't matter if I'm speaking MQTT yep. or not. Ultimately, I'm still getting my messages into Azure and achieving my outcomes. Yep. And one thing that you, you started off saying that, you know, in the first experiment, you had issues with TLS, for example. Here with the SDKs, you're basically just leveraging the infrastructure of the SDK to, to use a TLS stack that, you know, is available for the C example. Uh, on Python, it was pretty straightforward as well, leveraging the search store on the OS that is, uh, you know, hosting the application. So, yeah, using the SDK definitely should be the, the final thing here. You didn't have to do anything else and just provide the credentials and, and things were connecting and working and everything securely. Um, I'm, I'm fairly sure our, our teams here will be very happy to hear about that. Shane, thanks for, your, for sharing your experience here. So you have a blog post. We're going to bring up the link down here, and it's going to be in the description here, uh, which is automation.battlechino.net with two C and an H in the middle there. Um, and so, Shane, you, you're welcome on the IoT show in the future when you have some more experiments you're working on. I'll be happy to put you on the wrong track so that then you're going to correct and tell me, no, Olivia, it doesn't work for me. Um, that's going to be a fun one, I'm sure. Thanks, Olivia. And look, thank you very much for having me on the show today. Well, thanks for coming. Everyone, thanks for tuning in. And I uh, hope to see you soon on the IoT Show. Bye, guys.